rippling colorfully and tethered by a fine line of guidance. Go on, we breathe, and they climb, and in that place our hearts are suspended, completely abandoned to their flight. But if they slip through our fingers, how quickly they're windswept. Whirling, they toss and snag on fences, wires, drifting, perhaps to back alleys or even a chain link fence. Some may be found, some even returned, others not. This is the story of three lost kites. film team setting out on a journey to find answers for the global orphan crisis. I want to see what's the best way to help children without families. What is that? I think what started me on this journey was just the simple desire to help kids. I had done some traveling before that and saw there is a desperate need. Kids are so starved for attention. They're starved for someone who like thinks the world of them and, and really attachment to somebody. So for the next two years, we'll be on the road and traveling to more than 20 countries. <laughs> How far are you from home at this point? Um, I'd say about a good 20 hour flight all the way in Cambodia from Canada, it's not too close. This is probably the most extreme experience I've ever encountered. Just all the funny things that happen when you're in another culture, you think you got it. Like you get to the country and you're like, all right, I'm a cool person, I can handle myself. Two days into it, you've totally made a fool of yourself and then you just start laughing. To get up close, we're searching for three orphans. One from the streets, one from a shelter, and one from a foster family. What can we learn from them? And how will that change us? Can we find hope for these three, and for the millions beyond them? Today we start volunteering at a day center for street boys. We're hoping one of them will want to share his life with us and be a voice for children on the streets. So we offer to make a fundraising video to help out and to have quality time with the boys. Take one, yes, action. One. Try again, twist, twist on the side. We've decided to invest the next two months with the boys. Our hope is that in the end, one of them will want to be a voice. There's a lot riding on it, really. These children, they, they have a voice, and I want to do my utmost, do my best to make their voice heard.
anos você estava nessa foto? Eu? 16. Quantos anos você está agora? 16. 17. 17. Warwick has been living in a shelter for six years. In a few months, he'll turn 18 and have to move out. He's pursuing his dream to play professional soccer by trying out for the Atletico City team. And tryouts are in two weeks. O Eric sempre muito tranquilo. Não é de envolver em briga. Né? Não é um menino que, que desobedece às regras. Ele procura sempre ser muito obediente, sempre muito calado, né? muito tímido. Um excelente jogador de futebol, um menino muito dedicado ao futebol. Né? É o sonho da vida dele, é o desejo da vida dele, é o desejo nosso para ele também, né? porque a gente sabe que é ali que ele se encontra. Primeira palavra que vem na sua cabeça quando você pensa sobre o Wake: expectativa. Futebol é tudo, né? tudo é tudo depois de Deus. Né? Futebol é um sonho que eu sempre tive desde pequeno. Meu pai sempre teve também um sonho de ser jogador de futebol. Aí vou seguir os passos dele. Onde que ele parou, vou continuar. Você está tá esperando assim que você vê isso como a maior oportunidade da sua vida? Não. Vou deixar passar, não. Né? <risos> Carmela is two and a half years old. She was orphaned as a baby and now lives with local foster parents Joy and Hightow. Doctors discovered an 8.7 millimeter hole in her heart and she needs surgery as soon as possible. They say that the surgery will be life-threatening. Tadafumo 然后他的心脏的发育就会攻不上，这样的话就可能会崩溃。所以现在这个医药费的话，嗯，你们现在要怎么样处理的这个事情？太重要了。我完全不知道。嗯。When we think about an orphan, we may think of a child who's lost both parents. But that's not the case for the majority. Of the 8 million children living in orphanages, more than 80% have a living parent. The main cause of abandonment is poverty. So if most of the unparented children have family, and their family needs help, why aren't we helping them? Spend time with the boys who are increasingly drawn to Sandra. He's saving money with a plan to get off the streets. After
After talking together, he agreed to be a voice for street children. বোতল কমাতাম যখন এক বস্তা হতো পঞ্চাশ ষাট টাকা হয়ে যেত বোতলে কি ধরো যখন মানুষ যাচ্ছে যখন তারা জলে খেলে বোতলটা খেলে দিল ওই বোতলে কি না গাই থেকে কুড়াতাম কুড়িয়ে খুলতে পারি চায়ের দোকানে খুলতে পারি আমাদের ওটা তো তোমাদের ওটা তুমি এক হাজার টাকা তুমি খুলতে পারো কিন্তু তোমাদের এরকম বড় কিছু দোকান খোলার মনে হচ্ছে নাকি বড় বড় দেখো হোস্টেল খুলতে পারি খাবার দাবার হোস্টেল ভাত কোনো সময় বিকালে চাউমিন As we traveled, we met with authors, PhDs, and global advocates dedicated to helping unparented children around the world. Our first response when we saw children being orphaned by AIDS, I think the gut response of, of many people. Why don't we open an orphanage? Let's bring in, you know, 30 kids, really raise them in, in a fantastic way. But as we began to research and think about it and look at other models of care, we realized that these children still have connection with their community. And so we didn't want to take them away from everyone else that they know and love as well. Institutions tend to focus on the material needs of children. Quite a lot of money gets poured into purchasing school books, into heating buildings, into ensuring there's enough food and blankets and so on. Yet what the children don't receive is that genuine, unconditional love that you can only find in a family. These children may be fed and kept clean and cared for physically, but they don't have an emotional attachment. That is how they grow. That is how their brains develop. Unfortunately, that's not the case with many children who have been abandoned or left emotionally and physically. Warwick is packing his schedule to fit in enough practices before trials. find out there's one thing that could hold him back. Warwick had dropped out of high school and if he doesn't get back in, the team won't let him try out. Para fazer o teste no Atlético e até hoje a gente não conseguiu a resposta. O que você pensa sobre isso? The thing that worries me greatly about children who grow up in an orphanage is really their future years, especially. They tell us things like they, they don't know how community works anymore. And in many of the communities where residential care is running, family is everything. And so if you have no family, then how are you going to be an independent adult? A study in Russia found that of the children who grew up in orphanages, one in three became homeless. One in five committed crimes. One in seven became a prostitute. One in 10 committed suicide. So I think there's a point that can be confirmed. Um, just, no matter who sold him, 
，嗯，他在家庭里面，他会成长的很好。肯定的说，如果他是在一个孤儿院，或者是说一个集体生活里面，如果他得不到这种特殊的、单独的陪伴，如果他个人的特殊需要不能被满足，这个对他来说绝对是很残忍的事情。Today, Hightow is taking Carmela to get a second opinion. Wait a minute. When you check the test, you don't have to go to the doctor. You can't 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 go to the doctor. The doctors explain that Carmela has four problems with her heart. The hospital can only resolve three in surgery. It's possible other hospitals could do all four procedures, so they're going to keep looking. Today was going to be our first day on the street with Sanjoy, but he didn't turn up. The director says he's never done this before. We have no idea where he is, so we're going to go out and search for him. It's about 6.30 p.m. We're at our train station. It looks like he's staying in a place here nearby, which we can't get into till tomorrow morning. So. I think we're going to come back here tomorrow morning and just see if we can catch him when he's coming out of the uh, night shelter so we can meet up with him. Attachment is universal and every child from the beginning needs a responsive, committed caregiver. Emotions, reasoning, judgment, memory, physical growth are dependent upon this relationship. When the child suffers uh, consistent neglect, it develops what we call toxic stress. You see in this PET scan of the child on the right, the temporal lobes, they have little or no brain activity. There's an absence of the bright color. When you're looking in the lower area of that child's brain, you see activity. This tells you that the child is living with continued toxic stress. And toxic stress um, doesn't allow the brain to continue in development. She, um, she just said that the technic technician is going to go over to find out which school where it's going to go to because the judge approved that he can go back to school. Yay! So now they're just oh, going to find which so school. Yeah, it is. Oh, so good! Try out, here we come. That's a photo test. It's all for looking for lawyer. <laughs> Warwick is going with us to his first Atletico soccer game to celebrate his acceptance to school and to see the team he hopes to play for. In just a few days, Warwick must face tryouts. Next step for Kaka. Now the main goal is to focus on time to do surgery. I think for the moment, for the most important thing is that we are ready for surgery. Because if we choose the hospital, we are still in a uncertain situation in the hospital. Doctors advise Joy and Haitao to consider Bumrungrad Hospital in Thailand. So we arrange a Skype meeting, where they learn that Carmela stands a better chance at surviving the surgery if they go to Thailand, but the cost will be more than they can afford. 
Is the brain damage from toxic stress always permanent? No, my, I, I, I was shouted from the housetops with a resounding, no, it is not permanent. Um, it does require a committed caregiver and a, a connection. About 6.20 a.m. I went to Sanchogachi train station with a faithful rickshaw man. Salam just told us that uh, Sanji actually wakes up around 5 in the morning to leave rather than 7. And that he hops onto more express trains more than local trains. So it's gonna be kinda of hard to find him if he's hopping from city to city. There's Raj Gun. Raj Gun, we got the Oh, what are you doing? Okay. Yes. Not from the river. Not from river. So Manoj gave me a chai. They make the chai from the river. I think that's an exaggeration. Um, and anyway, it's boiling, so they make the chai from the river. Should be okay. Yeah. That tastes good, actually. Time on our visas is running out and there's still no sign of Sanjoy. As we continue looking, the boys fill us in on the dangers of the train station. Many of the kids sniff glue to stop hunger pains, and at any time, abuse, imprisonment, and trafficking could happen. Sam Joy arrived. Apparently he's gonna arrive here about 8 a.m. Nah, follow na. You see. One not the gun, the agla cord? No, two wire. I'm gonna take your power. We're gonna try and find Sam Joy again. Hopefully he's gonna turn up. Ten thirty. We found pretty much every other street boy that goes to the day center. We haven't found Sandra. no one um, that's accounting for Sanjoy and everyone told us you know it's a one in a million shot you're gonna find this kid today he's riding trains that literally a million people pass through every day what is going to happen we weren't able to find Sanjoy at our station or at Tiki Bar station so we're going to the bottle depot where is Sanjoy
day after day we continue to look, but Sanjoy is nowhere to be found. A fear begins to grow. So we're going to see Joy and Hightao and see what decision they've made and what news they have about going to the hospital, where they're going to go, if they're going to go to the Bangkok hospital, and if they are going to get funding from the orphanage. Because if they don't get the funding, I'm not sure how they're going to be able to do the surgery. Qual que é a sua esperança para você e seu irmão? Eu e ele vivemos juntos, né? Moro junto. Minha mãe, minha mãe, eu, minha mãe, meus irmãos. Eu acho que eu If the amount of money that was poured into orphanages in a yearly basis was poured into the support of families in crisis, families who need more support, then development the world over would be completely different. It would completely change. Residential centres are big black holes. You can throw money at them as long as you can, and they're still going to suck in more money. You can only care for so many kids, and you run out of energy and money and space. But with the community center idea and sending social workers out to work with the families and the communities, you can literally reach thousands of kids. And they're in families. People I've spoken to who have sometimes been in government have said, our problem is international donor mentality. They think we need orphanages and we don't want them, but they keep opening them. Community-centered care looks like this. You've got an orphanage, and you also have a community with families surrounding it. Social workers can begin reintegrating the children and also help prevent vulnerable families from separating. The building can then be transformed into a community center for everyone, and it doesn't cost as much. Today, international donors spend on average six times more on orphanage care than they would supporting children in families. So he finally arrived. Sanjoy is here. Yes, we finally found Sanjoy. It's okay if we come with you? So, on a show, on a bachelor tag in game, Goyana, tag in the tag in game, Kuri. Right as we enter the streets with Sanjoy, he leaves again. He says he'll return, but he doesn't. We can only guess at why or what's going on. We continue to search, but finally we realize Sanjoy doesn't want to be found.
Alisson Costa. Eric Silva. The tryouts last two days, but any of the boys could be cut at the end of today. So we're on our way to the airport right now, meeting Hightao and Carmela, and we're flying to Bangkok for her surgery. So far we've raised about $2,500, so we have a lot more to go, but they're just gonna keep pursuing it. Still in need of money, Joy will have to stay behind for now to continue fundraising for the surgery. When we started to support families, when we started to support extended families, we found that their capacity really rose to the challenge. And whereas before we had thought they're putting their kids in orphanages because they, they don't have the capacity to look after them, they're so broken or dysfunctional. Really, when it came down to it, almost every case, it was about poverty. At the basis of institutionalisation everywhere is poverty. So even in wealthy countries, if you look at which children are in institutions, it's nearly always children from poor families. And when we started, people said, you're crazy, it'll never work. Cambodians don't know how to take care of children. They don't know how to love children who are not of their own flesh and blood. But we've proven the opposite. We've almost always had a waiting list of families who desire to foster a child. And we actually, many of our children just end up with relatives who really care about the kids, but because they're having trouble making their own ends meet, thought that the only alternative they had was to place the child in an institution. We wrestle with Sanjoy's disappearance. How much neglect must it take for a child to run away? And how can we love these boys and then leave them? The way that I wrote about it in my journal was, it feels like I just caught the hand of my friend who's like falling off the cliff, and they're falling off the cliff and they're about to die, and like I have their hand, and you just get to like look at them for a couple more minutes and like say like, really, really, really. really there's nothing I can do to change my life. I'll just let go. Because there's, there's no one in their life who really loves them and thinks the world of them because they're amazing. It bears me so much to leave them. Because we're leaving them on the street and we're leaving them without parents and without people who really believe in them. There's not going to be anyone to do that. So many people just write them off, you know? They're like, Oh, street boys, I better watch my pocket. And they don't know that they're sleeping under a bridge or something like that. They're running away from something. And they don't have a family like you have. It's just easy to judge. 
and not know the backstory. He can't come be a voice right now because growing up he was neglected and so now he's he's having to make a living and he's having to take care of himself, which is the sad reality. The Atletico officials won't let us into the tryouts, so we have to wait for work to come back with the final news. preocupado né, para pensar o que, que eu vou fazer, né? que para frente eu vou, vou, vou ter que se virar. Né? If you're somebody who is giving money to an orphanage and are suddenly sitting there thinking, oh my goodness, I need to change what I'm doing, please consider not changing overnight because what we don't want to happen is for suddenly all of the residential care centres to lose their money because for better or for worse, this is where the children are calling home right now. And so what needs to happen is a gradual phase-out of the program. Hello. During the surgery, we decided to turn off our cameras out of respect. But So, I've been 
went very well. And she recovered exceedingly well. <laughs> we had a surgery on Tuesday. Just three days now, just playing around, walking. That's wonderful. Uh, 很惊讶,啊,怎么可以这样子,啊,所以他的身体很棒,啊,卡卡是最好。Joy and Hightow received a loan from the bank and several donations to make a down payment on the surgery. Carmela was discharged just days later because of her remarkably fast recovery. We're done, we just got back from two years of filming and we're just wrapping up the story. So what are some of your memories from this time that you'd like to pass on? I think just that there's hope. Children getting into safe and loving families, I think it's totally doable. It's not so much a call to children as much as it is a call to vulnerable families because that in turn helps the children. These things can easily change if there is a mass of people that agreed, yes, we need to take care of our orphan children because they're not lost or forgotten. They're chosen. At last we return and kites again take on bones and names, not paper and strings, but heartbeats and cuts that sting. Not even asking to fly, just wanting to be held. Neither numbers nor orphans. Our children.